I want to show you how I created a stylized water effect in Blender. I decided to do it through a practical example, this time Squirtle's water gun attack. First off, I created a quick Squirtle animation in Maya and imported it into Blender for scale reference. It's not needed to create the actual effect, but it does help to have something to inspire the effect you'll be making, like the shape, the scale, and the form, and so on. So I began by blocking the main shape of the effect. In the case of Squirtle's water gun, it's a cylinder. I scale it down and give it a long form and I'll bring back the Squirtle as a reference. I'll delete the back and front faces to avoid artifacts when I'll deform the cylinder later. And I'll add loop cuts on the cylinder. I want as evenly scaled faces as possible to maintain an even and regular deformation. Now it's time to deform the cylinder. First up, I created custom normals for the deformations. But before I continue, I want to quickly explain what a normal is for those who might not be too familiar. In Blender, a normal is the direction a particular piece of geometry is facing. Every vertex, edge, and face has a normal. This is data, and that data is used to compute lighting and shading information on a model. Or in the case of the deformations, normals direct which way the deformations will face. By default, it's almost always 90 degrees perpendicular. But you can modify which way the normals face in edit mode. To see the normals, I have to go in edit mode and turn on the edge normals on. They're color-coded in pink. Note that this won't work with face or vertex normals. Now I select the regions of the model whose normals I want to rotate. Ultimately, what I want is the normals to face backwards. With Alt plus N, I open the normals menu and from there I choose to rotate the normals. Just like that. Now it's time for the bottom region. Every time you click on rotate, a menu will pop up. I chose to rotate along the global axis, but you can choose whatever is more convenient for you. Now the side regions of the cylinder. And then the other side. Now it's time to add deformation, so I added a displace modifier. I change its name. I'll change its coordinates value to object. Note that if you have a subdivision modifier, make sure to enable the custom normals under the advanced tab or else the custom normals won't work. Next, I assigned a texture to my displays modifier. This is a part where I get experimental and try different texture maps with different settings to see what sticks. I'll have a time lapse playing in the background, but the main settings I'll be playing with are the texture map itself, its size, its intensity, its color and values, and the displays modifier strength value. Ideally, you want to go for something that is subtle. You want enough displacement to deform the water gun, but not too much to ruin its form. I added an empty to use as a displace modifier's object coordinate controller. I'll scale it as well to test out different deformation looks. Eventually, I began to settle on the wood texture map and added noise to its ring bands to randomize the deformations. Next up, I added a simple deform modifier so I can twist the mesh on its own axis to create a spiral form. Now it's time to model the water gun head. First, I disable the modifiers in the viewport so I get less lag. Next up, I'll duplicate the end's edges and separate the circle into a new mesh. From that edge, we duplicated, I'll model the water gun head. I'll mainly use the extrusion and scale tools in edit mode. Now it's time for the magic and play with the shading. Alright, so everything that we'll do in shading will be done through an emission shader. 
Generally speaking, the emission shader is what's used in stylization. I began with a Voronoi texture and added a texture coordinate and mapping node with Ctrl plus T and connected it to a color ramp node and changed the blending mode to constant. The constant blending mode is another key factor of the stylized look. For the texture coordinate node, I mostly use the object setting and as always I'll experiment with the color ramp node. I play with the sliders and try different color combinations. A tip that I could give is to try with more than just two colors, play with different shades. Three to four different colors will do. So I'll go from a dark blue to mid blue and to lighter and paler blues. Once I got my color scheme figured out, I went back to reactivate the water guns modifiers. Especially with the simple deform modifier twisting the mesh, it's looking a little better. So again, adjusting my color with the modifiers activated, eventually I figure out I want to reverse my colors positions in the color ramp node. I prefer the results that way. And once I was satisfied with the watercolors, I added an add shader node because I want to add white streaks around the water gun for a little foam effect. To make the foam effect, I added a wave texture node and did the usual by adding a texture coordinate and mapping nodes and then connected it to a color ramp node. And as always, play with the sliders and mess around with the texture settings to see what works. For me, I thought big and white foam lines would do the trick. Try different coordinate settings, play with the scale, detail, distortion, and other settings. You'll most always be surprised with what you come up with. Sometimes, even when I think I'm doing well, I'll go back and play with the sliders again to see if I can improve on my current look. There's always some back and forth, nothing is really linear. So I'll bring back my Squirtle to get an idea of how the water gun looks in the big picture. For example, after making him visible again, I decided to taper the size of the water gun closest to Squirtle's mouth. Next up, I'll tackle the water gun's head. I'll start by assigning it with a white emission shader. To create the foam effect, I decided to make it happen with a textured mask. I needed geometry to make it happen though, so I began by adding loop cuts. I'm trying to add as many loop cuts as possible to make the faces as squarish as possible. This way they remain even. And you'll notice also that the subdivision modifier that I've added was set to simple and not Catmull Clark. Here's the difference. Simple will only subdivide the geometry. Catmull Clark will subdivide and smooth the geometry as a consequence. Catmull Clark is what's on by default. I closed the hole of the water gun's head by selecting the edges, pressing F3 to open up Blender's options menu and typed in grid fill. It ensures the quads fill up the gap. Next up, I'll add the Vertex Weight Edit modifier to modify its vertex painting through a texture map. For it to work, you need a vertex group, so in edit mode, select all the vertices and assign them to a newly created group. Change the type to a custom curve, assign the vertex group, and then go to the bottom of the modifiers options to add in a new texture map. Once I assigned a new texture map, I went to Vertex Weight Edit Mode to view the texture scale and intensity in real time. Before continuing, I added a mask modifier so I can edit the mask texture while seeing the mask effect again in real time. A problem I encountered was that I didn't want the mask to affect the whole mesh. The base of the water gun's head should remain the same. I was able to solve the issue by doing some manual weight paint in weight paint mode and inverting the mask and the modifier. I also decided to change the head shape to be more blunt. For its shading, I added a linear gradient and added colors that ranged from white to light blue. As always, play with the settings. Ultimately, I decided to scale up the foam size. It felt too noisy when small, so I decided to scale it up a little bit more. 
Next up, we'll tackle animation. First off, I want to create a forward motion with the water gun. Since the water gun's displacement modifier's coordinates are hooked on an object, I'll animate it to move forward. For infinite motion, I typed in the driver hashtag frame forward slash minus 24 and the negative y axis. The value and axis of animation are for you to decide. By the way, pro tip, if you have lag in your animation, enable simplify in your render properties and reduce the level of subdivisions under viewport only to cap the subdivision levels. I also decided to add an animation in the water shader as well, so I'll add another driver in its transform y axis. I also copy pasted that driver in the foams animation as well. Now you really feel like the water is being shot and propelled forward. For the water gun's head, I added an empty and parented the head to the empty. I also set it up as the vertex weight modifier's object coordinates controller. This way I can animate the head and its mask at the same time. I animated the empty to rotate on its own axis and moved backwards to have the foam splash backwards as well. Finally, I'll show you how I added a stylized black outline. Note this only works in Eevee, not in Cycles. First step, you have to add a second material to the mesh you want to have the outline. That material is a simple black emission. Next up, add a solidify modifier, enable the flip box under the normals tab, then change the material offset to 1. Go back to the materials tab and enable back face culling on the black emission shader. And voila, you get yourself an outline. Now go back to the solidify modifier and play with the thickness value to adjust the thickness of the outline to your liking. And that is how you create a stylized water effect like Squirtle's water gun attack in Blender. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as fast as I can. Peace.